Here is a normal CT scan. I want you to familiarize yourself with the normal so that when we talk about the abnormal, it's a lot easier. This is what a normal CT scan of the lungs look like. You see in the center the mediastinum with heart and lung vessels, and then you see lung markings in both lungs on the right and the left. Now, if you don't already know this, a CT scan, you're looking up from the patient's feet as if they're lying on the table. So in this case, what we see on the right is actually patient left because they're laying on their back and we're looking up through the bottom of their feet as if their toes are in the air. If that doesn't make sense, you're gonna to have to Google a picture of what a CT scan looks like or what position a patient is in, but just keep that in mind. So this is again normal. We see lung markings, we see vasculature, we see everything that we expect to see. Here's more normal. This time it's labeled for your convenience. Again, we see the mediastinum with the heart, the different chambers, and one thing that I wanna draw your attention to is that the esophagus sits right near the aorta. The aorta is much more circular, whereas the esophagus is slightly smaller and a little bit more uh, abnormal of a shape. And that's kind of high yield because oftentimes they'll show you a CT and they want you to either pick out the esophagus or the aorta or the inferior vena cava or anything along those lines. So you really want to be able to decipher between uh, esophagus, vena cava, and aorta. So here's our first abnormal CT. Of course, you see the red arrow is pointing to something, but I'm going to pose the question to you, what's going on here? I'll give you a couple of seconds to think before we talk about it. So pause the video if you need more time, but what we're seeing here is a pulmonary embolus, specifically a saddle embolus. Now it's called a saddle embolus because it kind of saddles itself over the pulmonary vasculature right at the bifurcation of, of the pulmonary vessels. This is very high yield because a saddle embolus, if you're not already familiar, is a highly lethal embolus. Usually we can throw clots and clear them with no problem, but the, the issue occurs when there's a saddle embolus and it massively occludes the, ves the vessel. So here's a little picture of a, uh, a horse with a saddle on, and of course it's named as a saddle because it's kind of straddling itself over the vasculature as such. So this is a saddle embolus. This is very high yield. Here's a normal CT scan of the abdomen. Everything is labeled for your convenience. I would say that going into this test, the highest yield organs to be able to pick out on abdominal CT would be liver, spleen, and kidney. Um, vena cava couldn't hurt as well, but liver, spleen, and kidney are really your big three here. Sometimes pancreas, but again, liver, spleen, kidney. Of course, since we're looking up from the patient's feet, the liver is always on the right, spleen is always on the left, and then kidneys are gonna be on either side. So here's our first abnormal CT of the abdomen. I'll give you a couple seconds to think. What's going on here? All right, pause the video if you need more time. But what we're seeing here are two massively enlarged cystic kidneys. So you see them on the patient's posterior, right around the, uh, on the picture, it's at the bottom. But you just see two massively dilated kidneys, each filled with cysts. This is clearly a polycystic kidney disease. So how I think of this is that these kidneys look to me like the villain Freddy's face. Uh, it's just like all kind of big circles and ugly looking and big and scary. And I'm just like, shit, this is a Freddy polycystic kidney disease. So again, what you saw on this slide is uh, massively enlarged kidneys bilaterally filled with cysts, mixed areas of hyper and hypo density. What do we see here? All right, once again, pause the video if you need more time, but what we're seeing here is a huge, 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 huge um, fluid-filled cavity within the kidney suggestive of a hydronephrosis. The arrow the, the um, arrow without the arrow tip filled in is pointing to the large accumulation of fluid, and we know that it's in the kidney because on the patient's left and our right, if you're looking at this picture, but on patient left, we see their left kidney. It looks um, relatively normal. But then on the right, we don't see the kidney. So what's going on here? Well, there's fluid coming up into the patient's right kidney, which is on the left side of this image, of course, and it's filling up with fluid, and this is a hydronephrosis. So these two kidney pathologies, the hydronephrosis here and the cystic kidney that I showed you on the last slide, are also very high yield. This is a normal CT scan of the brain. We can see um, adequate brain tissue, we see the sulci and the gyri, and really nothing abnormal here. This is what's considered a normal brain scan. Now, look at this being normal, and then ask yourself, well, what's going on here? Pause the video if you need more time, but what we're seeing here are massively dilated ventricles. And if I were to tell you that you have massively dilated ventricles, what's the diagnosis?
Well, that's going to be a hydrocephalus. Here's a comparison slide showing you the normal on the left and the abnormal scan on the right. You can see that on the left, the system that houses the cerebral spinal fluid, or the ventricles, is normal size. But on the right, they are massively dilated, suggestive of a hydrocephalus. This is very, very high yield, guys. High yield. The next thing I want to show you is that we're going to go back to the lungs here. We know that we're in the lungs because we see lung markings on either side. Uh, something interesting to note is that this CT scan was actually taken with the patient prone. The reason that I know that is that on the top of the image, I see the uh, vertebrae and the vertebral body is pointing downward. So this patient is actually laying on their belly on a table and the CT scan is taken in that direction. So what I want to say, or I want you to tell me what pathology are we seeing in these lung fields? Or I should say in this lung field. Pause the video if you need more time, but right here we are pointing to a lung tumor. Now I want you to know that lung tumors are so high yield on step one. On my exam I had at least three lung tumors and if they're going to show you a CT scan, there's a really good chance that it's going to be of the lungs because the lung is just really not amenable to a plain film when it comes to looking at masses and stuff. Yeah, you could see uh, an area on a plain film that could be a mass, but you really wouldn't be able to differentiate it from, say, like a cavitation or maybe even a well-circumscribed pneumonia or like a tuberculosis uh, lesion. So if they're going to show you a lung mass, chances are you're going to get a CT. That is all the CT scans I have for this video. Again, in summary, I want you guys to remember that the highest yield CTs are going to be lungs, heart, brain, and abdomen. I would be able to differentiate esophagus from vena cava and from aorta. I would be able to orient yourself and identify when you're in the abdomen, the liver, the spleen, and both kidneys. If you can master that, then move on and also be able to see the pancreas. But again, liver, spleen, kidneys are going to be your big three. When you're looking at an image of the heart, ask yourself, do I see all four chambers? Does anything look abnormal here? When you're looking at the lung fields, start on the periphery and look for masses and then work your way towards the center. And when you're in the brain, always start looking at the lateral ventricles, because, or excuse me, any ventricle, especially the lateral ventricles, because ventricular enlargement is very high yield and they will tend to show you hydrocephalus. There are plenty of other CT films that you can look at for practice, but again, those are the highest yield. Good luck studying.